everyone. I welcome each one of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for this midweek Lenten service. As we begin, I'd like to read from Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for the cross means the world to us. Because of what you did on the cross, our lives have changed to and we celebrate this evening that because of your stripes, each of us are healed. Healed of this sickness called sin. Healed of the consequences of the sin called loneliness. Even as we continue to praise you, worship you, listen to your word, I pray that you would richly dwell amongst us, O Lord. Bless our evening time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, 
Let us look to God in prayer. Even in your houses, you can make a genuine prayer, Lord, here I am. Just as I am before an omniscient God. Nothing is hidden from God's sight. Even now as you have tuned into this service, this evening you can say, Lord, I desire holiness in my inmost being. Doesn't matter what my spouse thinks of me, my children think of me, my neighbors think of me. It doesn't even matter what I think about myself. What matters is what God thinks about me. So Lord, before you, I want to be holy. Not self-righteous, but made righteous. Do you desire that? Would you offer your entire being... Offer your body as living sacrifice, says the word of God. Let us pray. Almighty, gracious God, we come to you, Lord, as people who will never be perfect, but who do not want to keep fluctuating. Lord, we hate lukewarm living. We desire righteous, obedient living where the master is pleased with his children. You are our maker. The Holy One of Israel is our heavenly father. And so, Lord, we pray that when you see us, you will be pleased with us. Father, we repent for where we have faltered, Lord, not by our standards, but by your standards. Even this evening, through your word, nourish our inmost being. In these last days, Lord, draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy grave inside which float be of sin the double cure. Cleanse me from its good and power. Not the labors of my hands can fulfill thy lost demands. Could my zeal no respite know? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone 
Father, we thank you for this evening, for you enabled us to sit in our own places and listen to your word. Your presence is never deprived for each one of us, O oh Lord. We can all approach your throne of grace from wherever we are. We want to thank you for this opportunity. As we dig deeper in your word, pray that your voice, the voice of the Holy Spirit, would be that one voice that all of us hear. I pray that today's devotion would be a strengthening portion for our souls. Refresh us. Continue to help us to be transformed in the image and in the likeness of your son, Jesus. We ask all of this in and through the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to begin by reading Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 for all of us. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. That is Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. Have you ever seen a perfect child? Have you ever raised one? Imagine this, a perfect child at home, just listens to what you said, always and all the time, only talks respectfully all the time does not speak back, does not answer back, does everything perfectly, anything this child puts his or her 
hands on, it always results in perfect good results coming out. Knows every information better than the other child. Is always obedient. Helps the parents in whatever they do, wherever, whenever, whatever time they are asking them to do. Whatever she does is always, or whatever he does, the child does is always good. Every other parent wants to have a child like that. Do you remember anyone like that? I hope not. But Jesus was a child like this. Perfect in every way. Grew up in every way. Imagine Mary's and Joseph's home having a child like this. Mark Lowry writes a beautiful song, Mary, Did You Know? Few lines of that I would like to read. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Would one day save our sons and daughters? This baby boy has come to make you new, will soon deliver you. He will give sight to the blind, he will calm a storm with his hand, he will walk where the angels trod, and Mary, did you know that you will be kissing the face of God? The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. A perfect child who grew up in a perfect situation. He came to the world so he could redeem this imperfect world to become perfect. He knew that the location he came is imperfect. He knew that people who he lived around are imperfect people. Jesus grew up as someone with a life that was set apart. Perfect in nature. But you and I are also called to remember this fact that he becomes the chief high priest who we can empathize with who was tested and tried and yet without any sin. And this evening, I want to present to us three areas in which Jesus went through loneliness, suffered loneliness, and what he did because of his suffering. My first point is that Jesus understands loneliness. Jesus experienced loneliness caused by friends. My second point, Jesus experienced loneliness caused by his family members. Third one, Jesus experienced loneliness caused by separation from his father. When his father turned away his face. Jesus understands what is it to be lonely. The word lonely in the dictionary means unhappy because you are not with other people. It simply means solitary or without company or companionless. In simple words, it means you're forsaken by people. I want to move on to my first point. Jesus experienced loneliness caused by friends. The three years, three and a half years of his ministry, he chose people to be with. His disciples, he called them by name. He chose them and they walked away from what they were doing, lived their lives along with this guru, this teacher, this God who they saw in front of their eyes, this Messiah they saw. And this was a close group that Jesus had with them. They ate with him. They saw what grieved him. They saw when he got angry. They saw when he rejoiced. They saw when he took off to pray with his father alone, they noticed every detail of Jesus. They were the closest friends Jesus had. In Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 to 46, the prayer in the garden of Gethsemane. Then Jesus came with them to the place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. And then Jesus took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John, Peter, James and John go with him and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed and he begins to pray. One of the most heaviest moments of the Savior, of the Savior Jesus Christ, who is beginning to know that his time has come, 
but he is going to carry the weight of the world on his shoulders. And when he, all he asks his disciples is to, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch with me. Stay here and pray and watch with me, he says. And in verse 40 of Matthew 26, he then came to the disciples and found them sleeping. He then came to his disciples. He was disturbed. And when he came out to find out if they were praying along with him, that's the only support he asked his friends. In the most needed time when he had friends and these friends left him lonely. When he came seeking, they were sleeping. And he said to Peter, what, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus feels the betrayal and left alone, lonely, by the friends he trusted at that moment. Jesus mentions one particular name, Peter, he calls. Just a while ago, Peter argues with Jesus saying in Matthew chapter 26, verse 31 onwards, when Jesus tells to them, you will all be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written and he quotes Zechariah chapter 13 and 7. I will strike the shepherd, but the sheep of the flock will all be scattered. But after that I have been raised, but after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter immediately jumps in and answers and said to him, even if all were made to stumble because of you, I will not be made to stumble. I will be with you. I will never leave you. And Jesus said, what are you saying? Assuredly today, tonight, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter to that jumps up again and says, even if I have to die with you, Lord, I will never deny you. And so all the disciples joined in chorus and agree with Peter. Therefore, Jesus looks at Peter. Peter, you too? You just said that you could not die. That you will not, you will do anything to be with me. You just said, and now you're just sleeping. You too, Peter, could not be with me in the most needed times. Jesus feels the pain of his friends. The ones who he trusted betray him. Second time he comes out and he sees them sleeping again. He walks back. For their eyes were heavy, the scripture records. The third time he came and he wakes them up saying, Behold, the time has come. This is the time when Jesus needs his friends. and They are not there. Jesus knows what it is to be betrayed with someone. The savior of the world in the most heaviest moments of his life had no one to depend on. Had no one to support him in prayer. No one to talk to when he comes. Three times he breaks the prayer times and he walks out deeply disturbed in the languish of his soul. But he found them sleeping. His disciples, his friends, men who were closest to him left him lonely. There are many times you and I could feel in this world like that. When you have trusted a friend and they never stood up to meet the needs of your life. Jesus understands this. In the same chapter in verse 69, Onwards, Peter, the one who said, Lord, I'll never leave you. No matter whoever goes away from you, I will stay with you. I would, even if uh, things work out bad, I would stay with you. This is the Peter who denies Jesus three times. Just like Jesus had prophesied, the rooster crows and he remembers what Jesus said. And Peter weeps bitterly. The cry of the Messiah, as prophesied in Psalm 22, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I don't even have friends to relate to. Why are you so far away from helping? And there was no one to help. But listen carefully. There's a reason that Jesus called Peter's name. And that's because he redefines everything that Peter is about to do from the cross. What happens on the cross redefines Peter's life. In John chapter 21, Jesus meets this same Peter, 
the Peter who denied him, the Peter who probably is struggling with guilt. In chapter 21, Jesus is on the shore and as they walk, there is coal burning, there's wood burning and fish on top of it and Jesus invites them for breakfast. Probably the smell of coal and wood burning would have reminded Peter of the last time he was around a fire when someone asked him, hey, do you know Jesus? And how intentional Jesus was to pick up a personal conversation with Peter alone. Jesus calls Peter and says, Peter, do you love me? He asks him three times. What an identical number, isn't it? And three times Jesus says to him upon Peter's answer, feed my lambs, feed my sheep, tend my sheep, Jesus says. Because Jesus took this loneliness upon himself on the cross, no more will Peter or any friend of Jesus need to struggle with loneliness. No more. What Jesus did on the cross what was to beat every consequence of sin, separation, loneliness. And because he did that, he came to Peter and in that conversation, Jesus offered forgiveness. And what Peter received was restoration. Peter who left Jesus lonely is now restored with forgiveness and made a shepherd to the New Testament church. What a beautiful restoration, isn't it? Jesus understands loneliness caused by friendship and he solved it on the cross and he's restored it to his disciples. And this evening he reminds and he extends it to you and to me. If you and I are struggling with loneliness because of some betrayal of some friend, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus knows this and he solved this. He can restore this relationship. He can give you the purpose of what he has called you and he can turn you from a mess into a message. Trust me. I want to move on to my second point. His family. His own family. In Mark chapter 3, Jesus is accused by his family and the teachers of the law who are around captures this situation and they gather on to their original plan. Their original intent to see some dot on this beautiful holy white paper. Then Jesus entered the house and again a crowd gathered because there were people following Jesus. So that he and his disciples were not able to even eat. There was so much crowd that was pressing in that there was no space for them to sit and eat. And there's probably commotion and the news went out. And when his family heard about this, his brothers and maybe some other relatives heard about this, they went to take charge of him. For they said, for they said he is out of his mind. Just imagine if you are called for a unique task in your family and your family doesn't support you or doesn't believe you or doesn't even consider or doesn't even understand or perceive what you are doing. That's exactly what's happening to Jesus. Here are a bunch of his close relatives coming to tell in front of everybody public disgrace. He's out of his mind, they said. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, he is possessed by Beelzebul, by the prince of demons. And he is driving out the demons because he himself is filled with a greater demon. What an accusation for the son of God, for Jesus, our savior. This is the true situation that he was in. He knows what it is to be rejected. He knows what it is to go through loneliness when his own family does not support him. Way down in uh, verse 29, Jesus rebukes them and he says, listen, whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal life. He continues to teach what is the right thing to do because they were claiming that he has a spirit or he has demons in him. And he says, hey, watch out guys, don't sin and earn something of eternal guilt. Then Jesus' mother, verse 31, then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they, someone, they sent someone to call Jesus. 
a crowd was sitting around him and they told him your mother and your brother are outside looking for you news comes in and even the people are saying your brother and your mother are looking outside what is this transaction that's happening here your family knows you better therefore if they are telling you stop this and go your work that you're doing even though it is of kingdom importance even though it is of the purpose of the lord may not be important to the world's eyes his family when they saw their family his family their son their brother when they were disturbing him from his godly calling he felt lonely and others didn't notice the loneliness for them it was that his family was calling him and so they are pushing him to go outside why would mary be there his mother be there probably out of love but she could not see the purpose to save him from public disgrace in her own human mind she is thinking probably this is the way you save jesus from public disgrace so she thinks of stopping him from working and jesus answers jesus redefines then he looked around at those who were seated in a circle and said to him here are my mother and my brothers whoever does god's will is my brother and sister and mother whoever does god's will whoever understands the will of god and who is obediently executing that is my brother and sister and mother jesus redefines the family the same family who made him feel lonely the same family who brought disgrace upon jesus on the cross jesus does something really really marvelous for everyone to see jesus experienced times when his own family members did not understand him or his purpose they did not stand with him in fact they stood against him they declared publicly that he was out of his mind but on the cross there were four women standing and one disciple john and mary were one of those jesus's mother and jesus's maybe best friend or one of the disciples were there jesus shows himself in a very different way from being a son of mary jesus shows mary her savior as he's on the cross as he's dying jesus shows to mary that he is the savior who has to go on the cross to pay the penalty for the whole world and to provide redemption for whoever believes in him shall have eternal life mary at the foot of the cross and jesus as the elder son of mary hands over the responsibility of being a son of taking care of a mother to john right there in the cross a family is redefined a disciple of jesus becomes son takes care of jesus's mother at the same time jesus fulfills the duty as in obedience to the fifth commandment What is the fifth commandment in Deuteronomy 5:16 we read honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God commanded you that your days may be long and that it may go well with you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you as Mary's first born Jesus is entrusting his mother to John an act of love an act of restoration an act of concern that happens on the cross my dear brothers and sisters the cross redefines life and its battles jesus understands the loneliness caused by family members and redeemed and redefined it on the cross no more a mother or a father or a brother need to go through the struggle of loneliness jesus disciples will step in and will handle this who are jesus disciples today you me and jesus redefines the idea of family the family of god don't we have a very popular name for that the church so if you're sitting there despised left lonely by all the family members maybe they are all abroad and they've all gone on work and maybe you're elderly and sitting at home don't worry jesus understands your true situation and he calls for disciples all around the world to step in to be the family at this time the church 
to be the family at this time. Jesus understands loneliness caused by family members. My third and the last and I'll finish. Jesus experienced the loneliness caused by separation from his father. Jesus knew what it is. In fact, that's the most heaviest thing that our Savior went through. Jesus became the atonement for us on the cross, satisfying the wrath of God that each of us should have got. It is you and me whose hands should be on the cross. Our feet supposed to be on the cross. Crown of thorns was supposed to be on our head for every sin that we did. The word atonement means the atoning death of Jesus on the cross through which you and me are reconciled to God and his favor is restored. Those who cannot reach God, those who cannot touch and reach a standard today can call him father. That's you and me. Can call him Abba Father. Can talk to him. Can speak to him. We can sing and relate to this God. He accepts our praise. And when you and I pray, as though you and I are the only precious children in the world, he leans over with his ears to listen to you and me. What a beautiful relationship. And as Jesus goes through separation from his father on the cross, his own father is against him because of the wrath of God that should be satisfied. It cannot be done without shedding of sinless blood as atonement. Therefore, Jesus, his only son, has been given the responsibility to carry the burdens of the world, carry the sins of the world. On the cross, Jesus cries in agony, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Matthew chapter 27, 46. In pain, not just of the body, but his whole being, experiencing this loneliness away from his father. This was the very moment that Jesus cries out in pain. Every time this was the father he related to, every time he would break off from his ministry, go talk to his father. And the scripture has so much citing about that. It was this relationship that sustained him throughout. And this evening, as we think, Jesus misses this one big part. God the Father turns away his face as his son struggles on the cross with the weight of the world's sin. Jesus knew that his father will not be with him. In fact, he will be against him when he loads the sin of the world. When God turns his face away from him. The wrath of God was justified while God laid the weight of the sin of everyone, yours, mine, on this one Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus went through the pain of being forsaken by his father on the cross. There's a story that's told of a man who was responsible for lowering a railway bridge where a fast speed train would cross the bridge every day. And on one day, he chooses to take his son to work. And as he goes up to the bridge, he hears the sound of the train coming in. And he begins to lower the bridge. The story is told of a man who worked, who was responsible for lowering the bridge for a high-speed train to pass. And one day, he chose to take his son along with him to work. And as he went up to the bridge to lower the bridge down he heard the noise the arrival of the train as he was lowering he spots his son playing down there where the bridge was going to be lowered and if he would certainly lower it down it would crush his son to death with agony in his heart he did not know what to do and he looks at the train and the train is fast approaching he did not have time to go and rescue his son we all have heard this story haven't we with tears in his eyes and as he cries for pain to save the hundreds of people in the train, he lowers the bridge, crushing his son to death. And that is how Father God would have felt in human words and expressions. And this, as we read in John 1.12, 
but as many as received him to them he gave them the right to become children of god even to those who believe in his name that's you and me he crushed his own son under the weight of the sins of the world so you and i could be his children he knows what it is to be lonely in every part of the loneliness struggle it was redefined on the cross and even this too when he himself struggles cries out in agony and pain on the cross but had to take the weight of sin on him because of the cross and what jesus did on the cross the loneliness of all the world was taken upon him the weight of the sin was taken upon himself now because you and i can repent and experience forgiveness we can be restored with a relationship with god romans 8:1 and 2 there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit that's possible by you and me for the law of the spirit of life in jesus christ has made me free from the law of sin and death what he did on the cross has set you free from the clutches of sin and its consequences loneliness when he went through loneliness he ensured you and i need not go through it as i conclude my dear brothers and sisters i want to reiterate the three points and tell us how precious it is for us to know that we have a chief high priest who is tested and tried in every way but yet without sin what a beautiful example for you and me that jesus leaves for us to follow jesus experienced the loneliness caused by friends in this world he understands that jesus understood understands loneliness caused by friendship and solved it on the cross by extending forgiveness by restoring to his disciples to his children purpose and life i was lost but now i am found you and i can say that jesus experienced loneliness caused by his family he did know that he did experience that he understands if you are in that place jesus understands the loneliness caused by his family members and redefined it on the cross no more a mother or a father or a brother need to struggle with loneliness jesus calls the disciples and he connects and he redefines family for each one of us you and me are defined as the family the family of god people of god once what was shame is now the story of success on the cross savior redefines it my third point and i'll finish with this jesus experienced the loneliness caused by separation from his father the most deepest languish of his heart and as a result you and i can say i am now a child of god i am no longer slave to sin i never need to be lonely i do not need to be lonely he is there with me as i close i want to leave with you and me words of this songwriter tommy walker i have a maker he formed my heart before even time began my life is in his hands he knows my name he knows my every thought he sees each tear that falls and he hears me when i call i have a father i have a father and he calls me his own he'll never leave me no matter where i go he knows my name he knows my every thought he sees each tear that falls and he hears me when i call shall we pray father we thank you for this evening and for allowing and giving your son to each one of us we cannot earn this oh lord no matter if it were a thousand lives over and over again no matter a thousand tongues of years of praise to you there's no way oh lord but we thank you for this rich gift of salvation this rich gift that we have a savior who identifies with each one of our problems with each one of our loneliness and you took it upon yourself 
along with all the sins of the world, you had taken this struggle of loneliness upon this world. While you struggled alone carrying the weight of the world, you had taken my loneliness. You had taken each of our loneliness along with you, O Lord, so that we could be never separated again. We could be joined together in a loving relationship, in a living relationship with a God, our Father. We thank you for this. As we continue to sing of your praise, meditate and pray, I pray that you would richly have your presence rest and abide with each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah.
pray. Gracious loving God, we thank you for the word that you gave us this evening. Truly Lord, the life of Jesus on earth is a remarkable life that our emotions, our pain, our sorrow my Lord experienced in his earthly living the pain of loneliness loneliness from his own near friends from his own family members and even at the cross the loneliness and separation from the Heavenly Father O oh Lord this evening we pray that any time we feel there's no one for us, we can turn to Jesus because he is a high priest who understands our pain and sorrow. And so, Lord, if there is anyone watching this service, I pray, Lord, that right now your presence and peace would fill their minds and hearts. We pray, O oh Lord, for the millions battling the fear of death, the loneliness of struggle in this season, O oh Lord, as the world tries to be delivered from this corona pandemic. We pray, my God, by your mercy and grace that you will deliver, heal, provide and protect. Father, we pray for places where help is not reached, where there are too many people and help is not sufficient, we pray, Lord, that you will provide. We pray for the homeless. We pray for the elderly. We pray, O oh Lord, for many in challenging situations. We pray that you will be their provider. Lord, when we pray, we believe that our prayers are being heard and my God alone is able to answer and supply all our needs according to your riches and glory. Once again, we surrender ourselves to you. We love you, we praise you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God our Heavenly Father, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us now and forevermore.